Virtual World is an archetype revolving around level 3 and 6 worm and psychic monsters. It was reprinted entirely pretty much in the recent Megatin, so the deck is now ridiculously cheap. However, it can be a difficult deck to learn and play, and has very few uh, components in the deck that go into other strategies, bar the generic hand traps. So it's a very sort of self-contained, isolated deck. Anyway, let's get into the profile. So let's start off with three copies of Virtual World Lulu. Lulu is, so all the main deck virtual worlds bar a couple have the effect where you can target one virtual world card you control, send one of a different type, so monster, spell, or trap from your deck to the graveyard, and then special summon it, then do something. Lulu allows you to search for the third type, so you need to make sure you set up what you're targeting and what you're sending so you can get the search that you need. We have Three copies of Virtual World Lao Lao. Lao Lao is a level 6 tuner, and it allows you to special summon a Virtual World with a different name than the one you send to the deck, from the deck to the graveyard. So you need to make sure that you have something in your graveyard you can special summon before you use Lao Lao's effect, otherwise you're not getting the full value. Three copies of Virtual World Gigi. Gigi lets you uh, add a virtual world monster from your graveyard to your hand in the end phase of the turn. And then finally, we have virtual world Lili. Lili allows you to uh, send the third type to the graveyard as well, so it's essentially a double foolish burial. So you target a monster, send both a spell and trap to the graveyard, target a spell, send a monster and a trap to the graveyard. All of the virtual worlds also have the effect that when their effects are activated, you cannot special summon monsters except rank or level 3 higher monsters for the rest of the turn. So this deck plays no links. We have three copies of virtual world Nyan Nyan. Now Nyan Nyan allows you to special summon a mon itself in the graveyard if a level 3 monster is normal or special summoned to the field. Now if you send Nyan Nyan from the deck to the graveyard to activate... A level 3 Virtual Worlds effect, you will not special summon your Nyan Nyan, um, because it needs to be in the graveyard to see the effect activating. Um, it will special summon itself as a tuner, and then if it's banished, you get to target a banished card, put it into the deck. This can return cards banished with Potter Desires, or cards you banish yourself. And finally, we have for the Virtual World Monsters, we have one Virtual World Tutu. Tutu can normal summon itself without tributing if you have no monsters or you control only Virtual World Monsters, since they're all Psychic or Worms. Um, you can discard one Psychic or Worm and special summon it as a tuner, but banish it when it leaves the field. Very, very useful for unlocking clunkier hands. For our hand traps, we play... Three copies of good old Effect Failure. This will be Imperm very, very, very soon, but the Cyberdeck isn't released yet, so we're still on Vela. And then we have our classic Gamma package. Gamma, obviously, um, is a very good hand trap, not to mention it's psychic, um, so we can use it as discard fodder or for things we need type specific stuff for. It's a tuner so we can make crystal wing uh, without going through Tolkien. Um, it's just a really really powerful card in this deck and one of the best hand traps that we can play. And also if we can't go through Tolkien but we have emergency teleport we can summon it with emergency teleport and make crystal wing that way. Three copies of Virtual World City, Kowloon. Kowloon's most important line of text is the very first one, because we're never using any of the others, um, except perhaps the very first bullet point, but it's so minor that it doesn't really matter. Um, place one Virtual World Gate face up in the Spell and Trap Zone, so we can get the traps on the field straight away, um, get a spell if we need that for any of our Virtual Worlds, etc., Really, really strong card, and it's also a name that we can just bin to the graveyard once we've already used King Long as a spell. Speaking of King Long, here is King Long. King Long is the most important virtual world spell card in the deck. 
Uh, you can banish one from your graveyard, target one face-up monster on the field, negate its effects. So some very useful effect negation. Um, the effect continues even if it leaves the field as well. But the most important effect is you can banish it from the graveyard, search a virtual world monster, and then discard one card. <clears throat> Three copies of Pot of Desires, because going plus one is good. We can recycle some banished cards with Nyan Nyan, um, but we need the extra card because we spend a lot of time discarding cards out of our hand. Three Foolish Burial Goods. Sending Spells and Traps allows us to start off our chains uh, without um, needing to draw them. It's just an extra starter in this deck. Not every version plays it, but a lot of the cards they would play instead of this are cards like Talent or Crossout Designator that we can't afford. So we're playing Goods instead. Two copies of Emergency Teleport. We're now at two. We can now play two copies. I play Gold Rares to trigger people. Um, especially with someone one level three or lower Psychic from your hand or deck, but banish it during the end phase of this turn. Amazing card. Really, really useful. Um, this card lets us do so much stuff. <laughs> like, we can sell in Gamma to make a Crystal Wing with Stardust Charge. We can unlock hands by putting a monster onto the field. Um, it's really, really good. One call by the grave, because getting stuff ashed sucks. Two copies of Chuche. This is one of our main disruptions in our opponent's turn. Shuffle two banished virtual world cards uh, and destroy one card on the field. It can destroy your own monsters to stop to get effects there if you need them. It can um, obviously recycle cards, but it can't recycle desires banished cards because it specifies a characteristic. And then in the graveyard, it's got some nice level modulating effects as well. And then we have one virtual world gate, Xian Wu. Xian Wu gives us a little bit of battle phase position manipulation, which is nice and useful. But its most important effect allows us to special summon something from the graveyard. And then discard one card. So that is the main deck. So onto the extra we have... One Shen Shen, a big nasty floodgate boss monster that sends every card from the field to banished instead of to the graveyard. Um, so this absolutely screws with some decks. Uh, when it declares an attack, you can return one banished monster to the owner's graveyard. This plus Crystal Wing is an OTK on an empty board because you can negate your Shen Shen's effect with Crystal Wing um, and gain Shen Shen's attack. So that's fun to do. And then if it's in the graveyard, you can banish two monsters with different types and attributes and special summon this card. One, Zhu Zhu. Uh, Zhu Zhu can't be destroyed by battle or card effects when you have two or more monsters with same type and attribute but different names. Banish two monsters with same type and attribute but different names. Target one card on the field, send it to the graveyard. Non-destruction removal is very good, going second. One, Fan Fan. Fan Fan, detach two materials. Target one face-up card your opponent controls, one card in either graveyard, banish them. Uh, this can banish stuff so you've got fuel for a Chuche. This can obviously get rid of problematic monsters. And then if it's destroyed by battle with an opponent's attacking monster or by card effect, while in its owner's monster zone, special summon two virtual world monsters with the same type and attribute from your deck. One, Jaja. Jaja lets us... Uh, give us some protection, and is also the best way of getting one virtual world monster that we don't want banished back into the graveyard. Because obviously some of them, like Nyan Nyan, if they go to the graveyard, they banish themselves. But obviously, if they're detached from Nixie's monster, they won't banish themselves. One ultimate Zolkin. Zolkin lets us make Crystal Wing. Um, that's the main reason we're playing Zolkin, and then we can use Zolkin in combination with another card to make Invoked Kaliga. Speaking of Crystal Wing, this is our main monster negate. We can make this hard with uh, Cypher and Gear Gamma and Stardust Charge Warrior, or we can make it with Zolkin. The only thing to remember is if we're making it with Zolkin, you need to have a spell or a trap you can set before um, making it. Otherwise, you will just end up putting a Zolkin on the field for no reason. Also note, if you have Crystal Wing and Shen Shen on the field, 
and you activate Crystal Wing's effect, Crystal Wing will not gain attack, um, because Shen Shen will obviously banish the card, assuming the effect you're negating is on the field. One Wolf Riot. Wolf Riot is like a Nibiru from the extra deck. Note it gains attacks any monster when any monster's effect is activated, so that includes your own, so you can put it to close to 4,000 straight away, which will obviously mean your opponent can't run over it. Shuffles all c itself and all monsters your opponent controls into the deck. Um, so you maintain board presence, your opponent loses their entire board presence. So they have to out this. One Vermilion Dragon Mech. Banish one tuner from hand, graveyard of field, target one card in the field, destroy it. Brilliant. Great for breaking boards. Basically free removal. And it's 2700 level 9 that we can easily access. One Stardust Charge Warrior. Uh, this allows us obviously to draw a card, which is the most important effect of it. It's a level 6. Um, it's not a tuner, which is useful for obviously going into Crystal Wing. And it's used to make cards like Tolkien. One Coral Dragon. This is a tuner. Um, if it goes to the graveyard, we get to draw a card, which obviously, if we can make this plus Stardust Charge, we make Tolkien. We've essentially drawn two cards, so we've replaced both of them. Um, and is also more removal. One Muddy Bud Dragon. This is allows us to make Invoked Kaliga with Solkeen because we can substitute its name for the Invoker and then Solkeen is the Dark Material. Other than that, there's not much more to to say. And then for the Xyz, we have one Ptolemy M7. This lets us just return monsters on the field to the hand. Very, very useful. And we can also return stuff from the graveyard to the hand as well, if we need to. Not a quick effect, though. So, again, most useful going second or on turn three. One Utopia Beyond. This is nice OTK material, making every attack your opponent controls zero. One Break Sword. This is very, very useful for destroying our virtual world gates that we've used um, to stick them into the graveyard. It's level three. Again, really helps us breaking boards. Um, we're not using its second effect because we don't care and we don't play any other Phantom Knights, but it's just very, very useful for breaking boards because we always have spare uh, face-up spells and traps that we can use or putting something in the graveyard, we can just then bring it back with, say, Lao Lao or something else. And then finally, we have Invoked Kaliga. So our end board will quite often look something like Shen Shen plus Crystal Wing plus Kaliga. So we, our opponent is locked into one monster effect. One can only attack with one monster. We have a monster effect negation. We have, um, obviously, everything being on field banished, and so on. So that is the deck. That is Virtual World. I hope you enjoyed the profile. It's now so much cheaper thanks to the Megatons because everything got reprinted. So bar one super rare and one common that you only play one of each. So yeah, go and buy Virtual World. Um, and I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching.